And this is, and now I feel bad because this is like a question that's like, because you could get in this a book, but I, I, now I feel bad. What is like one strategy you share in the book that could be helpful to someone listening to this right now? Okay. You don't have to feel bad. I mean, again, I know, like I have all like, sorts You should read the book though. Like <laughs> you share something from the book. You get it for free right now, but you should get the book. And I, and I'm not, I don't get any money for this either. Like I just, <laughs> it's a really good book. So I just wanted to share that. Well, thank you. Yeah. I think sometimes when we look at team building or um, culture building in our meetings, we think of like camp kind of activities. And it's so interesting because I've put a lot of stuff out like on, on TikTok or about icebreakers and like beginning of staff meetings and, and what should we do? And there's, I get a lot of feedback. So it's it's all good conversation. I, th- I don't mind just throwing right. things out there that might challenge yeah. our thinking. Absolutely. But, in the book, um, I actually share an idea that I got from Brene Brown's um, Dare to Lead book, which is identifying our own two core values and doing that collaboratively. And I'll just share with you a story from when I did this with my staff. Um, so basically, I on Brene's website, she has a list of 100 core values. And that the, the the practice is you select the ones that speak to you, then whittle it down to 10, whittle it down to five, whittle it down to two. And I, I was listening, re-listening to her book one summer a couple of years ago, and I thought, I don't even know what my core values are. So I'm going to do this exercise myself. And when I did that, the exercise, I identified t- two core values of mine as integrity and making a difference. Mm-hmm. And I thought, gosh, I really think my staff should know that these are my two core values because they, these core values motivate a lot of my behavior. Mm -hmm. But then Brene talks about like, what if the staff knew each other's core values? And she tells a story about her CFO and how he kept questioning her about financial decisions she was making. And he thought, she thought he was like really judgy and didn't trust her when they did this exercise. And she found out that like, financial stability is one of his two core values, which like brilliant that he's her CFO and that's one of his two core values. But she just began to look at his questioning of her in a different light. Like this Mm -hmm. is driven by your core value, not by your judgment of me. And the same thing happened in my staff. So um, we had a staff member who notoriously, and she knew this, um, was it felt a little judgy about like bulletin boards and kind of like the physical displays that would be up in the, the school. Like if I had put a bulletin board up, she would be out there like with a staple remover and a stapler and straightening things up. And, and I was like, finally, I'm like, I'm not even doing bulletin boards because I know I can't do them good enough to, to for this particular staff member. But we did this exercise in identifying our core values at the beginning of the year. And one of the core values on Brene's list is beauty. And I thought, who's going to mm. choose beauty as one of their two core values? Like, I was a little judgy about that. Right. But this staff member chose beauty as mm. one of her two core values. And the end game there is we started looking at that as a strength of hers and a gift she can provide the school rather than a judgment. So understanding right. it was more about her and her view of the world than about us. And like she became the head of the beautify Quincy elementary I committee. Yeah. Yes. So that's team building. Mm-hmm. That's understanding each other. That's way better than any kind of camp activity. And of course there has to be a culture of trust and how we did this activity um, with my staff is I, I bought little canvases from the dollar store and, and I bought paint pens and they created just a little piece of artwork. They had their name and their two core values. And I didn't make them stand up in a circle and share their core values with each other because some of them seemed a little bit uncomfortable with it. Like it was a little personal mm-hmm. for them. Mm-hmm. And so um, they were, they just shared them in small groups with their, mm-hmm. their team. So I think we just have to be careful when we're, when we're doing activities like this about how we ask them to share with each other, but yep. it, it was hugely valuable for um, my staff. And I think for any staff. Well, you know, the, that, that, I love that focusing on core values and, you know, really kind of that asset thinking mm-hmm. and developing strengths there. There was a time I was in uh, a school and I remember being there and I, I really, one of the things I always challenge people is to look at things with fresh eyes. Like you've never been there before. And there is in the gymnasium where they'd have, you know, or sorry, the auditorium where they would have big events and things like that. And the whole school would go into, there's like a, a, a big portrait. I can't remember what was in the portrait, 
But what I can remember was the frame was cracked and it was broken. And I'm like, do you understand that every time kids walk into this room or there is this basically this portrait that has a giant crack in it. It's just like, like we just let things kind of go around here. Right. And mm-hmm. there's, there's, I, you know, I, I've shared the story before. There's a certain sense in, um, it tells you a lot about a leader. If, if they, if they see a piece of garbage in front of the school and if they walk by it and ignore it or pick it up mm-hmm. because, there, because it does say something to our community. It does say something to our kids that we don't necessarily care enough about this space to, you have it look its best. So like that notion of beauty, that's the first thing I thought of was how, what does that say to our kids when we don't really care about the surroundings that they're walking into every single day, as opposed to like, we have a sense of pride because right. this is such a beautiful place. And this is so important on, you know, how we respect, um, you know, the, the area. So I, I just love that. It's- 